Melissa, I have started a very important journey in my life this week, this the, the past like two weeks. Is it driving? <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. That was a good <laughs> one. Not though. now. That was when? a good one, though. <laughs> <laughs> the people demand to know. Uh, <laughs> Melissa, I have started showing my partner venture brothers. Uh, Good. Oh. Yeah. And oh, we have, this speaks to me personally. We've, Thank we've you. gotten through season one. Um, it, it, it had been like a few years now since we've watched it on the review show. So I was like, you know what? It's about yeah. time for a rewatch. Uh, and my partner being into cartoons and mm -hmm. all of that stuff, I was like, you will love this. Not only is it like the right kind of stupid that you like, like that kind of comedy, but it's mm -hmm. like riffing on all of these cartoons that you watched g g growing up that we had a good time, like with all, all the Scooby Doo stuff, all the Johnny Quest, all of this, all of that. She loves it. it is like, this is awesome. <laughs> so. Good. I am. I'm, I'm very super glad. happy. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we got done with season one. So we're probably going to start season two sometime in the next week or so uh, here. But I, I will uh, keep you updated, keep you posted on where I we're appreciate at it. What she thinks. Yeah. Yeah. I, Especially as it gets more plot heavy. Yeah. 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 So. Good stuff indeed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Whatnots Captain's Log number 265. My name is Kyle Springer and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how are yep. you? I'm doing fine. How has your weekend been? My weekend has been great and uneventful. Yes, <laughs> Melissa Wilkinson from the whatnots.com. You are about to interrupt me here. I like that to the audience member who can't see that I've raised my hand, they think this is just a, you just randomly <laughs> address me as a reporter. <laughs> right, yeah. The beginning <laughs> of the prompt is not there for them. Uh, my folks have been on a road trip this week. They right. drove to, yeah. among other places, the John Wayne Experience in Fort Worth, Texas. Mm. Not a museum, but an experience. Right. So I don't know if that means they get to try on one of his hats. <laughs> is, is it like hats with like a 3D like virtual reality thing <laughs> on top of it? So you're in you're like you're in one of the movies there. They've like mapped no out the space to look like the saloon in. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. There, there, there you go. <laughs> uh, my dad sent me a photo of John Wayne's Oscar. Uh -huh. We knew that would appeal to me. So that's all I know. And they went to the Grand Canyon. Cool. Which is so big. It looks like it's a matte painting or something behind them. Right. Like it yeah. just fade. Like you. The landscape fades out in the horizon and it turns that blue gray color and it looks standard definition. The whole thing looks like that. None of them. None of it looks like it's in high definition. It's that big and that <laughs> far away. <laughs> That's kind of wild. Did they get to go like down into it or did they just like do oh, some I don't of the think so. around I, it? They're not that adventurous. Ah, okay. I don't think they go into things. They just go up to things. <laughs> <laughs> They've gotten in the vicinity of. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's funny because they've been to Roswell three times and this is the first time they've made it to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> Were they in the back Go around Naruto running <laughs> at R R Roswell. I'm telling you, they're not that active. <laughs> they don't climb. They don't Naruto run. <sighs> Missed opportunities. <laughs> they, they were driving through Oklahoma City. They passed through your fair town on mm -hmm. the way out there and on the way back. And last night, my mom texted me saying, we're stopping in Oklahoma City for the night and we'll be home tomorrow. Can we bring you anything? <laughs> And Kyle, <laughs> go, go, go kidnap <laughs> Kyle. He can't, and then, uh, he can't drive himself. You yeah. have to do it. <laughs> but I'm like, all I want is a hot fudge sundae from Brahms. And you mm. can't bring that to me. But you guys go enjoy one for yourselves, please. We'll do that. We'll do that. We I, we <laughs> we we missed our, our perfect opportunity to 
do that because a couple of days mm. this past week it was like between 65 and 70 like would have been oh, just yes. absolutely perfect to oh. just go get an ice cream sundae and hang out um but i, I mean we did uh, other stuff in in that time but uh yeah it's starting to get a little chillier now still not super cold but just mm-hmm. slightly chilly so All right which i'll take after it was like negative 20 a couple mm. weeks ago, nowadays right. I leave my door and it's 35 and I'm like, ah, ball me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> indeed. Like the good, good, like sweatshirt and maybe a jacket on top of it. Yes. Weather. Sweater so and denim jacket, not a mm-hmm. full coat. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. Um, but let's see, Melissa, we have some interesting stuff to talk about. We today. do. There is, this is so a there full is, episode. Yeah, we, ha- we have the main event. Which is Melissa, as 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 you wrote down on our our notes doc that no one can see. Melissa explains it ball. <laughs> na 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 exactly na 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 na. na. Hey, I, cool. I challenged you. Uh, I guess at the start of the year, or was it like end of last year? Was it end of? It was like la- two. It was two, it was like two months ago. I think on our grand prix mm. or last captain's log of next year. You're like, I know you've been slowly orbiting, learning more about football. And you're like, by the time we are up to the Super Bowl on the episode that is Super Bowl Eve of episodes, you got to explain how football works to me, Kyle, who does already know. Yeah. Yeah. I am. I am familiar with the sport. I can follow it. I grew up watching it. All that good stuff. Um, But before we get to that really Quickly, I have two quick things that I want to share. First of all, apparently, apparently in the past two weeks, there's been like three earthquakes here in Oklahoma. Uh, All of the fracking that they 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 do out out here, we get some. Two of them I slept through. It was early enough in the morning that I'd never felt it. But uh, my partner told me was like, "You slept through these, but." They happened. Uh, and then I guess last night or was, was it last night or Friday night, uh, we we got got one that was a pretty decent size one. Five point six, I think, is what my ah! partner uh, m- m- mentioned. Um, and it was a wild experience. It's not my first earthquake per se that I've been awake for and in. Um when I was in college, there was one in Richmond uh, or so- somewhere in Virginia. Yeah. Um, but it was it, it was small enough and I lived close enough like to the street and to campus that it was plausible that someone in a crappy car with a crappy sound no. system turned all the way up and their bass just pumping like that. That could have been it. Like, I still felt it, but was just like, yeah, t- turn that down, all the dang hippity hopping and kids do today, you know. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but it, yeah, then we like got online and everyone was like, earthquake. And I was like, oh, I, <laughs> I guess so. Earthquake, huh? I lived through it. We had that, to wait is... for a, s- a scientist to tell us. We can't tell yeah. for ourselves. Yeah, no, it, like that's, the, we, we don't get those in Virginia. Like that was, that's not something we experienced. So it was just mm. this awkward, like once in a lifetime kind of thing of just like, whoa, that was wild. Uh, but the, the one that we had the other night, uh, definitely the biggest one I've been in, but only l- lasted like five seconds. So it was really mm-hmm. short, short, but it was still just like, what is happening? What is going on? I have not experienced that. that that's um, foreign. So, yeah. I wonder if we experience. got anything like that up here, because the other night I was laying in bed and I thought I felt my butt wiggle. That may have been <laughs> been it. <laughs> Like you may have, you may have felt an aftershock. I was laying on my back. I felt like my butt vibrates, and I'm like, I'm, I didn't do that. It wasn't me. Is, I, is <laughs> Whoever smelt the Delta, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it wasn't me. Just like a full jiggle, and I'm like, is this an earthquake? 
earthquake or like did my downstairs neighbor drop like what i didn't sure. hear anything so it's not like my downstairs neighbor like dropped I mean, a that's piano a, yeah. or something very heavy and it like vibrated the building i don't know what it was like you're, you're, it you're probably been... close enough to me that by time it reached you it just caused you to go full j- 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 jiggle <laughs> and <laughs> just, just that, like that jello. was it yeah yeah that was right it, it was i might have been so close to sleep that i hallucinated it i i can't tell for <laughs> understandable. sure understandable yeah who knows <laughs> i gotta get I got to get a Fitbit or one of those things that tracks your sleep. Maybe it'll tell you if like something moved you in the night. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, but then, so uh, uh, I, I guess a year ago now on the podcast, uh, I we, we went through, I think we named the episode of the Captain's Log, the Suburban Looky Loo or something Death like that. Death in the Suburban Looky Loo. Yeah, yeah. When a neighbor that you don't really know died. So you have yes. no emotional attachment to it, but you just keep like that guy over there on that side of the house. Happenings around you. Yeah, he passed away and on him. he had this really small yappy d- 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 dog that since he was an older guy and couldn't get to the door very quickly or often, uh, would sometimes just leave the dog out there for extended periods of time. And that's why it would bark and bark and bark. bark, bark, bark. Mm-hmm. But the they're like side door is right next to where our bedroom window is and that's where the dog would bark so it'd be like right outside our bedroom window um and it was it it was not fun but then he passed away and we got a few months of silence uh we had some new neighbors move in after that uh I, i i don't know if i mentioned it here on the podcast at one point we thought they were swingers uh (laughs) unconfirmed who knows uh what what was your evidence a pineapple it 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 was like often different people were over there like this other couple was often over there like really late at night but didn't Mm. live there with them um another thing would be like they 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 also had a dog they had a big dog and they too would leave him outside and he also had he's he of course did not have a small yappy bark but this like big booming like um and it like that was no fun and whenever this other couple would come over they would have a second dog and there would be Mm. nights every so often where the dogs would get left outside and either the people were still there and it's like we we know you can hear them barking like what are you doing in there like why are you not getting oh, your dogs that's, like it's very obvious that, is, that you that's can good evidence yeah. yeah if you're in the middle of a of an orgy i don't think you can untangle yourself to see to a dog very quickly right right yeah um it's just an inconvenience so they we, we think <laughs> they, they, they would just like leave them out there while they're inside having fun or who knows what um but they towards the end of last year those neighbors kind of disappeared we thought they just Ah. went on vacation but then we didn't see them all of january uh and and so so it it was like it was like end of november like thanksgiving time Mm -hmm. they left they weren't there all december they weren't there all january uh and then sure uh, like end of january we start to see them again but they're they're it's 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 hard to tell if they were like packing things up or and putting it on a truck or maybe they had done that before and we missed it and now they're putting things back in we were trying to come up with all these scenarios of like Maybe they found mold in the house and had to like live mm. in a hotel and they've been working on the house and I, I just haven't been paying enough attention to really who knows what. Uh, but there's there's different people there now. There's a new car in the driveway instead of the ones that's there. Uh, the dog is no longer there and we think they have a cat now. They have an outdoor <laughs> cat um, <laughs> because there is a a. What we 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 think is a stray, but we're not entirely sure. It seems to be well groomed, well taken care of. The small younger cat, 
uh, that we've had once or twice. But then we thought we saw it and we went, went outside to go feed it. But it was a completely different cat. This cat, uh, it looks like its its tail had been <laughs> cut off when it was younger or something. So it looked like maybe they adopted this cat or who knows what. But this one had a collar. Um, mm-hmm. And th- when we saw this cat, they were also in their backyard working on building like a swinging porch chair kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, so like we, we were still not enough, like, are, did you live here? What's going, we weren't like on that level yet to be like, Mm -hmm. hi, my name's Kyle. Who are you? Do you live here? Are you like, oh yeah, we've always lived here. What do you mean? And you weren't the guy, it would just be an awkward situation. The, the, the whole, the whole thing. So we've, we've started noticing more and more cats. There was that one stray. There's this one with no tail. Uh And now there's a third cat. And it's just another neighborhood cat. And this cat just likes to yell. Just, meow, meow, meow. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, it, it's it's like our our own cat, Simba. He likes to yeah, 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 yell when he's not g- 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 getting attention or when he knows I'm in here in the podcast room. <laughs> and he's just like, Dad, I know you're in there. <laughs> Let um, me podcast too, Dad. Right? Yeah. Um. But uh, like, so it's just all of a sudden there's this new like gang of cats in the neighborhood. And on Friday, when Rachel came home, she was about to pull in the driveway. But all three of the cats were in front of our garage door, just sitting there and yelling. And so, yeah, we have like a secret council of cats happening in our neighborhood. And they're all congregating at our house what (laughs) What? i don't what do they want from rachel i want them to leave rachel alone i don't like the idea rachel loves them she's just like come to me okay okay (laughs) but that's that like we we don't we don't necessarily have the time to take them to go see if they've been shipped or we don't feel comfortable enough introducing ourselves to our neighbors in that (laughs) way of like hey can we steal your cat? Is this your cat? Or are, are you the same people that were here before Christmas? Um, do you guys know the dead you, guy? <laughs> hold on. Do you don't know if they're the same people from November? I've barely seen them. And the ones that were okay. there before, I barely saw them enough to recognize them. I thought it was like a younger college g- girl that may, 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 may uh-huh. moved in. But then my partner kept being like no it's it's a like a middle-aged couple that are that's there and like then who's this other person that i keep saying and then i like i saw move in to the the, the house and then she's like i don't know but then there's also this other couple that's there. i'm just like i don't know who you're talking about Have so you- i'm i'm so con- 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 confused about what is happening in that house <laughs> Have you learned your lesson now to just immediately introduce yourself to all new neighbors that you don't have to live in this gray space in the future of, I I think those are the same people. I mean, that's probably what we should have done. Yes, that's probably the good neighborly thing to do. Uh, But it's too far gone now. We are the nosy (laughs) neighbors looking through all of our blinds and stuff like that. Like they're home. That's a new car. Oh, what are they doing? (laughs) (laughs) So that's what we've been up to over here uh, at at, at our neighborhood. But that, yeah, that's I I just had to give updates on all of that good stuff. So thank you. (laughs) There you go. Indeed. Um, Cool. Well, with that, I say we take a quick break for housekeeping. And when we come back, Melissa, I need you to explain football. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll be right you back. You asked for it. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out this podcast. We hope you're enjoying it. If you didn't know, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots, and a lot of hard work goes into making them. So we would love it if you check them all out. But none of this is possible without your support. Head over to patreon.com slash the whatnots, and you can get access to over 40 hours of exclusive content, including our Patreon first podcast, The Pilots Club, when you sign up at our $3 tier. 
Of course, there is a free version of the Pilots Club available, but episodes are exclusive to our Patreon for two years before they hit the free feeds. If you're interested in buying merch, we have shirts, hoodies, mugs, and more for sale over at the whatnots.com slash store. Another great way to help us out is by subscribing and leaving a nice rating and review on your podcasting app of choice. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for video versions of the show, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, you can always find out more information about the shows we make on our website, thewhatnots.com. All right, we are back once again. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate it. It means a ton. We love you a lot. Uh, over on the Pilots Club uh, for the, 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 this month, we recorded an episode on Heat Vision and Jack, which I have to say, I, I think is maybe the most fun I've had with a pilot. Like, it, it, it was just mm -hmm. absurd. It was so ridiculous. It was directed by Ben Stiller, starring Jack Black, and the voice of Owen Wilson as a talking motorcycle. Um, it's a man who was transformed it, into it, it, a motorcycle. Yes. Yeah. This was filmed with back in 1999. Uh, <laughs> yes. Just a ray. That's it. No explanation. A ray. He was hit by a ray. Um, and this this thing was absolutely bonkers. I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, but this was a pilot that did not get picked up into a full show. So it's just one of those like odd pilot pilots that's just out there. Uh, you guys can go watch mm -hmm. it on YouTube and you guys can also hear our episode on that. Uh, if you are a three dollar tier and above patron. But speaking of the Pilots Club, Melissa, we finally released our first free episode of the Pilots Club. Woo! Congratulations to us. Um, From two years ago. Yeah. A pilot of the Pilots Club. Indeed. Yeah. Um, so if you guys have been hearing us talk about the Pilots Club for the past two years and you're interested in what that show is, but maybe you don't have the means to support us monetarily, that is A-OK. -okay. We are starting to release uh, the Pilots Club publicly for free for anyone who wants to go check it out. Uh, the catch is that episodes of the Pilots Club will remain exclusive to our Patreon for two years before they hit free feeds. So the very first episode of the Pilots Club that we did on the sci-fi drama Eureka is now available for you guys to check out. And those will be coming out on the first Friday of every month. So there you go. Good, good news with all of that. Uh, right here on the captain's log, last time we got to record, we did our planorama to uh, look at some of the future games and activities we might do on the podcast throughout the year. Uh, and Melissa, you uh, talked about the scent of crime. Your, your, your car had gotten broken into and they didn't steal something. They left something behind. No. So <laughs> interesting they left stuff. The it was bright good. It was fun. citrusy scent of yeah. Kenneth Cole reaction. <laughs> <laughs> so go check that out. Over on the review show, uh, we got to talk about Blue Eye Samurai, uh, which was a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Uh, so go check that one out. And then over on the reactor core, our most recent thing is our spoiler cast to Marvel's e e Echo. Um, so there you go. You guys can go check that out. Keep an eye out for some stuff from the reactor core down the road. Uh, I know as um, I'm not sure how many episodes. I think there's like six episodes in True Detective season six. four, season one. Uh, but we will do a spoiler cast for not season one. I, I said Night season Country. four, season one. Yeah, yes. For season four, season we will do four, a spoiler True cast Detective. for that. Once it's all out one there of and one complete. of night country. Yeah. Um, so be on the lookout for all of that. But that is about it for housekeeping. So let's get into some football. Melissa, a while back, you, like I had started to uh, try and teach myself Korean and you I, like, like just kind of for fun. And I would see like where I got after those few months and you challenged me with saying something uh, on the podcast after those 
three months. I probably butchered it. I did terrible. You, <laughs> Nothing stuck. You, um, you said one sentence, and I don't even yes. remember anymore what it was. It, it, was, it was not it was climactic. Like, yeah, yeah, I was like, uh, hi, my name's <laughs> Kyle. Uh, which is, <laughs> it, yeah, I don't even remember exactly how to do all of that. But it was just like an, a fun little challenge that I kind of gave myself and then you kind of piggybacked off of that. Uh, which is where I got the idea, because uh, at one point last year, you had said, like, you know, I I'm, I kind of just want to know what's going on in a football g- g- game. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, I, I think you said your dad watches football. I think your yep. roommate plays football. Yes, All she plays stuff. women's tackle football. She is a yeah. defensive end. And mm-hmm. I wanted to understand what that meant. There you go. So, yeah, I was like, Melissa, explain football t- to me, especially with the Super Bowl being next weekend. Yeah. Uh, e- explain football t- 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 to me. So, Melissa, I'm turning it over to you to explain it <laughs> as if I don't know a thing. OK, uh, I <laughs> made myself watch some playoff games to prepare for this. I watched a lot of YouTube videos cute little animatics cool i watched a number of playoff games uh i did enjoy it more than i thought i would it is starting to coalesce for me i'm gonna watch the super bowl next weekend yeah i don't think i'm into it enough to then watch from the beginning of the season when it starts again in september but i could see myself checking out maybe a couple playoff games and a Super Bowl again next year. Yeah, it's absolutely. it is helpful. I just I just wanted to be conversant in this thing. You only got so many years to bond with your dad at some point, like you got to meet him halfway and you got to learn the things he's into. And this sure. seemed easier yeah. than learning about cars and motorcycles <laughs> and the John Wayne experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Football is played between two teams. Mm -hmm. They play on a field that is like 120 yards long and like 50 something wide. Goal posts are 10 feet high, which is taller than your dad. And they're like 18 feet wide, which is wider than your dad. I did not know that. There you go. Each team has 11 players on the field, which is part of the complication. When I have tried to look at football, there's just too many things happening on the screen at one time. And I don't know what it is I'm supposed to be looking at if I can't obviously see the ball. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I knew you were supposed to watch ball. But when it's just a pile of dudes, I don't know how to (laughs) interpret that. But I'm and I didn't know what all the numbers meant. But I knew that it was played in quarters. Because when you're a little kid and you want to watch something on TV and your dad's like, you can watch it after this game is over. Yeah. And they have 15 minutes left. And then you see that the 15 minutes takes 90 minutes. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) I knew that. So there's four quarters. The number quarters means four. Sure. Yep. There's a total hour of (laughs) playtime broken up into four 15 minute quarters. Halfway through, you get a a halftime. You know that. Um, each team, there's an offense and a defense and the offense has to get the ball across the field to the end zone. They don't even have to get it through the big yellow fork. They just got to get it in the end zone and that's a touchdown. Uh, so they get four downs, which is an opportunity, a chance to Get to make yards to get closer from the line of scrimmage, which is where they start. And I don't know. I guess at the beginning, it like starts in the middle where the logo is. Uh, And if you get a penalty, like if your team uh, makes a mistake, if if you're rude or you step out of line, literally or figuratively, they'll wait. They'll like drop a yellow handkerchief. And it's like you Little had flag. your yep. line moved back like five or ten yards. Um, you get four downs to uh, move ten yards away from the line of scrimmage. And as you inch closer, you're closing the gap between where you start and where the end zone is. 
which makes it easier to get the ball there. Um, a touchdown is six points. Correct. And you get a bonus point on top of that. Like, <laughs> like buy 12 donuts, get the 13th free. <laughs> so you get the six point touchdown. And then for a bonus, you can like kick the ball through the goal uh, and that gets you one point or you can go for two, which is literally the name of it. And you do some other thing and that could get you two points. Yes. But that seems to be less reliable in most games I've watched. Nobody's really tried the go for two. They just take the pretty reliable. Uh, he kicks it and he gets one point. Yep. So there's the offense and the defense. Each team has got like a set of 11 guys who like do either role. And then there's special teams, which are the guys who are just there to like kick real good. And yeah. they're not necessarily categorized as offense or defense. And there's like three of them. Uh, you can also do a field goal, which is three points. And I think I would see like they'd go, teams would go through the whole set of downs and they wouldn't get a touchdown. And then they do a field goal instead. Uh, I don't know if you always get that at the end of your downs. I couldn't figure out exactly what triggered it. It's but that will get you three points. Okay. Yeah. So why would, so they just always do it if they can choose to try and kick for three points. They, they, they can try and uh, convert on that fourth down to get that f first down. Right. And get that like, okay, he, now we have the next okay. f four ch chances. But if they don't think they can make that happen, you'll often see them kick on that last down. It'll, they'll be like, it's fourth and, and 15 on the 30 yard line. And the uh -huh. and the Steelers decide to go for a field goal. They just think, hey, if nothing else, maybe we can get three points out of this mm. in instead. Yeah. Um. It was helpful to know that there's only that many ways of getting points. Like you can't get, you can only do like four things to get you points and the points are always these certain numbers. So when I turn on a game and I look at the score, I'm able to work backwards and mm -hmm. like divide and figure out, oh, okay, so this team has had this many touchdowns so far. And when a game is getting close, you can kind of do the math in your head of, all right, they win if they get one more touchdown. Like, it makes it more finite. It narrows yeah. the possibilities of what you think can happen. At least for me, that's made it easier. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. a, the other team can intercept. So if, like, you, if the quarterback throws the ball to the running back or the, the wide receiver, who can be any shape, he doesn't have to be wide. He may personally be narrow. <laughs> if he throws the ball at the guy and then the um, defense catches it, they it's their downs now. Yeah. Going, interception. It's our. Yeah. An interception. A sack. It's not just what White Castle burgers come in. A sack <laughs> is when the quarterback is doing his maneuvering and when he's like he gives the orders, he yells the codes and the numbers, and he points. Blue, and like, two. he'll like. White Castle. Right, White hike. Castle. Hike. He's the guy who says yike. <laughs> or says <hike>. yike. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the guy he's, who says jinkies. <laughs> before, before he gets sacked, he says yikes. <laughs> <laughs> he says zoinks. Um, a sack is when before the quarterback can like even move, all of defense just dog piles on him. Which is part of the fun. What I have really enjoyed about football is that it's so start and stop and it's just like tackles and piles of dudes. Just 11 men deep. But sometimes mm -hmm. they will throw the ball or a guy will like break through and run. And it's this beautiful, like clear motion, it, free of any boundaries or piles. When a guy breaks out of the pile and just goes, it's really cathartic. It's yeah. fun to see. You Absolutely. watch the piles to see when he goes. <laughs> Football. You watch the piles the to see when he goes. <laughs> <laughs> we solved it. That's football. <laughs> and then when they get a touchdown, 
They sometimes they do a little dance. They look happy. Just seeing these guys express teamwork and camaraderie and good job and support and you got it, man. I find that very heartwarming. When some yeah. guy is like so shocked at like I did it, I actually made the touchdown, his head's in his hands, and his friends are like shaking yeah. his shoulders. I love that. They'll do like shoulder bumps and like butt pats and like helmet touches and chest bumps. Yeah. And I asked my roommate if female football players also do chest bumps or if that hurts your boobs. Cause I'd never thought about it before. Right. Yeah. She says, no, we also do chest bumps. Yeah. So all sorts of players, all sorts of chests getting bumped out. So there. fun fact, they, they used to do like those dances and celebrations you saw used to be a lot more intricate and that was the that's thing what i seem to remember would yeah do. yeah uh and then the league kind of clamped down on that and they're like all right guys like let's let's just play the game let's not do all of the, this stuff I, here let's move things i along. do i do remember the episode of family guy when peter joins a football team and he gets a touchdown and his touchdown dance is the entire Shapoopy number from the Shapoopy. Shapoopy. <laughs> yeah. The girl who's hard to get. <laughs> um so when they're facing off against each other, when the quarterback's two and is yiking when he's telling everybody <laughs> what to do and pointing around the he can point, but otherwise the offense has to stay still. But the defense can move around as much as they want, just sort of scuttling around, trying to like aim themselves at those guys. So as soon as they snap the ball, they can go into tackle action. Yeah, that's what my roommate does. She's a defensive end. So she's at either end of the defensive line and she'll just clobber them. Yeah. She's a to make the quarterback say yikes. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, each team seems to have three timeouts that expire at the end of each half. So as mm -hmm. you get into like the last like three minutes of a half, that's when the teams decide to use all of the timeouts they've saved up. And that's how uh, minutes can stretch into hours on a football game. Yep. 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 That's how you play. You, if, if there's a tie, you can go into a 10 minute uh, overtime. And if that doesn't decide it, there just is a tie. Yeah, it's You're just tied. The NFL allows to score that. In NFL. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed. I thought indeed. That I watched a I watched a comparison of like this is NFL versus like college football. And I think college football said first to score gets the point. NFL can have a tie. There's also the UFL, for, which is the combination of the XFL and another thing. <laughs> now oh St. Louis, XFL. we used to have the Rams. <laughs> And then the Rams went to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. but we do have a UFL team. We have the St. Louis Battle Hawks. Interesting. Interesting. Don't know if this there you go. how big of a thing this is, but I'm happy we have it. You know, the, the you XFL go. only had like six or eight teams anywhere, and they picked our <laughs> city to have a team, and I felt very proud. Uh, so we used to be Rams country. I remember when the Rams won Super Bowl 2000, first Super Bowl in the new millennium. Mm -hmm. We are now Chiefs country. I yeah. asked you, in Oklahoma City, do you know, are you also Chiefs country? Or are you like the Cowboys or the Texans or yeah, can you tell? I, I, I can't really tell. Um, I, I think last time you asked me, I was like, it, it, we're probably more so the college here. We're o -E -O -E -O, mm -hmm. the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, so probably more along those lines. But professionally, I, I don't I, I feel like you could kind of go either way. So nice. I don't know. Uh, I watched a game that the L.A. Rams played in. I don't know anything about this guy, but there's a player on the L.A. Rams whose name is Yeast. Yeast. There you go. That's what it says in the back of his jersey. Just Yeast. Yeah. A great rise to fame <laughs> by Yeast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought that was funny. The players, when they arrive on the, the scene to the stadium, they mm -hmm. get dressed up and they walk like a little carpet that's just for them. And apparently <laughs> this is a huge deal as you put on your pregame fits and you can be like 
very fancy and wear a suit. You could have some like hip new streetwear. It can be anything. I forget this guy's name and what team he plays for, but there's some guy who had, uh, he was in a fire. He had like burns on his face. So he had to wear this like therapeutic mask Mm -hmm. to shield his face. And there's a photo of him going into one of these pregame red carpet walks. It's not a red carpet. It's probably whatever color the team is. He's going down the carpet in this mask that makes him look like Baron Zemo. And then he's shirtless, wearing like a fur, not a fur coat, but like some intense looking like trench coat with like a faux fur hood. Yeah. He looks Wild. like a super villain. It's it's the coolest looking person I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the That's man's so name. Hope he's well. Uh, this this Super Bowl, the mm-hmm. one on Sunday. I don't know what its numbers are. Some the numbers Roman are in numeral Roman thing. numerals. Yeah. I I did watch a video on the history of the Super Bowl. So the first one ever was played in 1967, and I'm like, this is how my dad knows football because every time I look at it, I'm just flabbergasted. But he knows it. I'm like, how do you know this? When did you learn it? I'm like, oh, you were already 13 when they started doing Super Bowls. Yeah. So you, <laughs> you, you've seen every you, rule change and right. new regulation. And you could yeah. get in on the ground floor. Uh, first Super Bowl was played between the Packers and the Chiefs. Um, and I think it's Super Bowl five. They put a Roman numeral five on it. And I think they did that to sort of. To separate it from, because it's not, uh, because they do it after the actual year of main league play. So, like, they're doing it in 67 to cap off the league year that was 66. <clears throat> so, they're like, we're not going to call it the either of those years to confuse it. And I guess they're like, like, let's not even do a regular number. Let's do a Roman numeral. Yeah. So, I don't know which one we're on now. Every... Super Bowls had its own logo like the Olympics. Yep. That's fun. Uh, this year, we have the AFC, the American Football Conference champs, the Chiefs, who I think have won like two or three times in recent memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the NFC, the National Football Conference champions, the San Francisco 49ers. Both of these teams are red. So I don't look forward to watching the Super Bowl and try try to understand red team versus red team when I already barely know what's happening. Well, they'll one of them will be in their away jerseys, so they could be in white. It might be like a white and red thing there. Um, Still too much red. I was really hoping like a blue or a purple guy would get in there (laughs) last year. The Super Bowl was the Chiefs versus the Philadelphia Eagles. And so the two Kelsey brothers were facing off against each other and their mom wore a jersey split down the middle that was both of their jerseys. So I think Barbenheimer has her to thank. There you go. We would not have the (laughs) Barbenheimer fashions we had if it wasn't for Mama Kelsey being there first. So this year we have Chiefs versus 49ers. Uh, The Chiefs are from Kansas City. They play at Arrowhead Stadium. Kansas City's main food is barbecue. Paul Rudd is from there. Uh, The 49ers play in San Francisco's Levi's Stadium. The main (laughs) foods of San Francisco are sourdough bread, rice aroni, and Ghirardelli chocolate. (laughs) And Venom lives there. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Now I understand football. Venom lives there. Okay. (laughs) Kansas City barbecue is slowly smoked. (laughs) It is seasoned. The dry rub. What? <laughs> and it is covered in a thick, sweet sauce. There's like molasses in it. What so is that's how you tell a Kansas. I. That's what they eat. <laughs> this is what powers football. <laughs> this is this is my way into it. Every time my dad has a football game on, I ask him where are they playing. And Mm. I ask, what do they eat there? Ah, okay. And how did those like? How did those boys get so big? Like, what are they eating? (laughs) (laughs) What are they doing? (laughs) I I've been watching the playoffs, thinking 
you know what? I love a theme. I love a <laughs> themed menu and a celebration. Ooh, so are you gonna make depending something? on. Yeah, that's I was watching like whoever gets into the Super Bowl, I'm going to make that city's food. I was kind of hoping Detroit would get in so I could make their good pizza. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we're going to make barbecue and sourdough bread looks hard. I, I've never made a bread on that caliber before. So I might just oh. make rice a <laughs> Yeah, that works as like a side to, to, to the barbecue. You could even barbecue just go like, and rice a buy a sourdough loaf. And I, I don't know I if sourdough might not make great garlic bread, but you could do something like don't that. No, you can garlic it. bread anything that's a bread. I, I, I mean, yeah, you really can. <laughs> Maybe you can do it uh, that Las way. Vegas. Las Vegas is home of the sphere. Yes. So we're going to see a lot of sphere during the show, presumably. I look forward to that. Don't know if my parents have seen the sphere before. I'm really excited for them to see it. I found I a good to... video that's. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I found a good video that's just <laughs> this is what the sphere is and how it works. Here are its sections. Here's how it was constructed and what it does. So we're all going to learn about the sphere together as a family. Yeah, I got to see it in the Formula One Las Vegas Grand Prix. Right. Because they race right around it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the halftime performer this year will be Usher, who's been a guest when like the Black Eyed Peas or somebody did it some years ago, but he's never headlined. Mm. Like weird. Usher. For us, millennials is one of the top stars. Regardless, yeah. I, I have no specific personal <laughs> attachment to him. Yeah, but just yeah. as all millennial, I recognize that's one of our guys. That he played. His These songs played at all our school dances. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he'll confess at halftime. That's a, Got a those are pretty burn. heavy songs. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can't wait for the pyro effects with Let It Burn. I'm sure he'll put on a great show. Um, and finally, when you watch the NFL on Fox, they've got that robot guy. Yeah. Who dances on the bu commercial bumpers. His name is Cletus. Yep. <laughs> Interesting, interesting, That's good football. stuff. That is football indeed. Melissa, thank you so much for explaining that. Thank I you. I am now uh, I, enlightened in the ways of football, I, I believe. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to get to watch the Super Bowl or not. We uh, were hoping to have some people over. Don't know if those plans are actually going to end up happening or if they'll fall through or not. Uh, but we were just uh, 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 hoping to have some people over for like a game night. Like maybe we can put the game on in the back ground and play some Jenga or, or stuff. Who, also, who knows? some Uno. There's the Puppy Bowl. Yeah, the Puppy Bowl is not as long lived as the Super Bowl. I think it only started like seven years ago or something. But on Animal Planet, the day of the Super Bowl earlier in the afternoon, you can watch the Puppy Bowl. We're in uh, a bunch of pu puppies that you can adopt, play on Team Rough and Team Fluff. Yep. And they just got to get, they're just playing like a little fake stadium and the field's filled with toys. And just like if a puppy carries a one toy it's great. into an yeah. end zone, they count that as a touchdown. They have like <laughs> not little jerseys, but little bandanas. They all have cute names and they tell you where they're from. Uh, there's a kitty halftime show, and at the end, the pups uh, win the Lombardi Trophy. Mm, so when I go. watched football coverage and I saw they could win the Lombardi Trophy, I'm like, that's where it comes from. <laughs> that's a knockoff Lombardi Trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Highly recommend the double feature, the Barbenheimer of its own, Puppy Bowl and Super Bowl. Absolutely. That's what I'm going to do. Absolutely. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I grew up watching football. Uh, my my family was a uh, I guess the team is now named the Washington Commanders. Um, mm -hmm. But that, that was our team growing up. I was 
never super into it. I liked sp sports, but uh, it was at some point in high school. It was like, well, do you want to continue with sports or do you want to focus on art? And I was like, I kind of want to do art. So that's Ooh, what I did. The um, eternal high school musical choice. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I thank you. Thank you for explaining that. Thank, thank you for fun. giving me the impetus to do so. I wouldn't have done this on my own. <laughs> I, I figured it'd be a fun challenge. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, Melissa, let me ask you this, too, because here on our, our notes, uh, you have Dark Universe Resurrection. Now, I, I oh, yeah. very vaguely heard something about th this, that they're maybe trying to revamp this dark universe the like universal monsters in all one big cinematic universe they tried and kind of failed but i don't know what's what's the what's the situation with 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 this guy remember the dark universe it's back in theme park form oh it's a theme universal park. Oh, Stu okay universal studios orlando which has Universal Studios Orlando yeah. and its second gate, Islands of Adventure, which is I've where you there. can find mm -hmm. uh, the Marvel area, Jurassic Park stuff slash yep. Jurassic World. I think both parks now have a Harry Potter section. They are adding their big third park or fourth park if you count the Volcano Bay Water Park as a third park on its own. This is called Epic Universe. Epic and Universe. I so far, it looks to be living up to the word epic. Uh, huh, again, as millennials, we lived through the overuse of the word epic. And I'm now very cautious when I see it brought up again. Yeah. But this feels deserving of the moniker. It is this massive new park. And it has these different themed lands in it, as most theme parks do. First, you're going to open onto Celestial Park, which is non-IP based. It's just a lovely astronomy themed nature filled park they're like we're putting the park back huh, in the okay. theme park there's greenery there's waterways there's fountains it's gonna be beautiful it's gonna be scenic this is where you start it's gonna have a new take on a carousel not your grandpa's carousel this is a new version this carousel won't <laughs> sell out it won't be a carousel it'll be a carabai or something <laughs> A, a, a <laughs> Kara Rebel. That's what it'll be. <laughs> uh, and everything's got this sort of old, I mean, not steampunky, but like sort of celestial astronomy, sciencey looking vibe to it. It looks very like, cool. There's a like, like a, retro a dual futurism roller coaster. kind of thing. Yes. Yes. Sort okay. of. But like very like spacey specifically. Ast astronomy. Space like I think the. The animals on the the carousel are like zodiac and like constellation animals. Okay. I'm a Libra. I don't know if I can ride a scale. <laughs> I don't know if a I don't know if a Gemini can ride a pair of human twins on this carousel. We'll have to see. They a, a, a scorpion? I'd love to ride a scorpion. On I mean a carousel. they said it was I've gonna be epic, Melissa. <laughs> Scorpions. Um they have a land. They do have a, another Harry Potter land, which mm -hmm. are uh, they just I know it's not Imagineering because Imagineering is Disney's specific term. But those Harry Potter lands are some of Imagineering at its finest. They are so detailed and lush. And I, 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 I I'm excited for the cre Right. I'm, I'm excited for the creativity they will bring to that. There's a ride that is being kept secret. They're mm -hmm. like, we're going to tell you the sort of setting. It's being set in like the ministry of magic the different versions of the ministry of magic you've seen in the different movies okay. and there's a big ride we will tell you no more interesting there's going to be another super nintendo land uh yeah. you've got your mario kart ride you've got a donkey kong ride of some kind that's cool you have a uh how to train your dragon land those movies are fun i don't yeah. know if you've seen any of those I've seen the first one, maybe the second or third. I don't remember, but I know it's like it's it's almost like Land Before Time now in my mind, where there's just like 28 of them and like three television there's, shows, and there's no, about there's, to be a live there's, action. There's, 
and there's three and there's one show and i think the original like creator of the series is personally helming a live action version probably to tie into this theme park area yeah it seems you can get to ride a dragon seems fun uh and then there will be dark universe literally mm. dark universe where there's <laughs> the, the monsters are out they come out at night they come out at day there's supposed to be like a I don't know, like a Dracula's castle ride or like a bl- creature from the Black Lagoon boat ride. I don't know. That's but awesome. I'm very excited for this one. And this seems like the place everybody is the most excited for. Sure, we like the rest of it, but give us the Universal Monsters yeah. and a little that land. so much there. fun. It does sound very fun. It's opening next year. Can't cool. wait. Cool. Cool. Good stuff. Well, yeah, because I, I wasn't sure exactly what it was. I, I, I saw some rumblings about it online, but didn't look into it. Um, so here you go. Now you know. Now you know, indeed. Uh, a few pop culture lightning round news tidbits to get through here. Melissa, have you seen this 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 teaser for the Wages of Fear remake on Netflix? I, because you sent it to me. Otherwise. This is relevant to our interest, but I don't yeah. imagine this was hot for uh, the, the viewers at large. A remake of 1950s French slow movie, The Wages of Fear. It, it, I mean, it's it's like literally slow, but it is just so tense. Like you were on the edge right. of your seat the whole time. But yeah, I like we, we covered that on the review show this past year. Did 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 we know this was happening? I don't remember if we no. like mentioned it or figured it no. out later at some point. I yeah, I happen <laughs> to see. We didn't solve the clues. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> uh, but I saw this and was just like, oh, they're they're remaking this, and it, it, it looks interesting. Seems to be basically the exact same story. Yeah, there is there does seem to be one kind of bigger change. We'll see what they do with it because this was only a, like a minute long teaser. So, yeah, it, it's too early to really tell who these pe- people are. But it looked like the drivers of these trucks filled with nitroglycerin seem to be more like ex-military paramilitary merc right like, stuff to make it more like action based down the road but who like, knows yeah so I, I i don't know if that's exactly the case or not uh but just from that vibe i was just like ooh, maybe not the vibe i would have wanted uh um, I, <laughs> I liked it, that I, it was just so, like regular people that were driving yes. them on on the original yeah. so who knows i I like the Wages of Fear. I like the William Friedkin remake from the 70s called Sorcerer. Both are good. I, uh, each has its own strengths and less yeah. than strengths. I think there's stuff that I love in one movie that I think the other movie doesn't do quite so well. I watched them both and I'm like, I still need more. I Each movie's got like a big chunk in the at the beginning that's like exposition and setup and scene setting. And it takes a while to get them into the cars driving slowly. I'm like, I want another version of this. that gets yeah. them in the cars real quickly and then makes them go real slow. It's just a slow. long drive. Yeah. I, I love the creativity and the <laughs> harshness of the obstacles they can face. I, I would love to see more versions of it. I just think the yeah, premise is fascinating. Same. I love a movie with a mono premise. Where it's like just this one thing is happening. They just have to drive very slow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to see how far we can stretch that singular limit. Uh, I don't need anything more than that. Slow trucks, please. Cool, good stuff. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, Squid Games Season 2 is finally in production. I've seen some like behind-the-scenes photos of that, which is a lot of fun. Same thing with Severance Season 2. They are back to filming God. that. Uh, so I'm ex- super excited there. Uh, Supergirl has been cast in James Gunn's new DC universe. Uh, congratulations to Millie Alcock. 
who I'm not familiar with, but I know she was in House of the Dragon. I think she played the younger version of Khaleesi, if I'm not mistaken. I think <sighs> I don't know. I, I I don't watch that show, but don't know anything uh, about that corner of the world. Yeah. Uh, but con- congratulations to her uh, for getting that role. Uh, and then in on the Marvel side of things, uh, Geraldine Viswanathan, hopefully I said that right, is replacing Ao at Barry in Thunderbolts, um, which is news that I'm both like, uh, sweet. I have uh, I, I'm not familiar with this new actress, um, but also oh, I she's going to think... be in. She's going to be in driveway dolls. Oh, OK. Well, I'm excited about that because that's on my list of like, I'm going to go see that one. But also, I don't think I knew that Ao Beery was in Thunderbolts. That somehow I, I there think were a lot of, past me. I, there were a lot of names announced for Thunderbolts. Yeah. And very few, very little imagery. Very little of it felt concrete. I think I did know that distantly. Yeah. But it was such a small detail. And there was so much of that title that was a mystery i don't remember hearing this is who we think she's going to play I, right. I don't know i didn't get to any theory stages of it um and then i think uh whoever steve steven yoon was playing which we thought was century i, I think century has been cast i think but i, I don't remember are they I couldn't saying find officially it's century now well, that's the thing is like i I, cu- I couldn't find who they cast in that role uh in my like real co- quick like did i like the tweet did i like the post thing that they have there i don't know I, so, if this sounds right i think i remember that. somebody saying it's the guy who played bob in top gun maverick you remember mm. there's that one pilot in the group of pilots who's like kind of dorky looking with glasses and they call him bob and supposedly yeah. it stands yeah. for baby on board because he's like yeah yeah uh, maybe perhaps cowardly compared to the rest of them you got to take care of bob if 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 that's him then i i think he they, he will make a great choice there for his mm. entry um so there you go good stuff uh to wrap things up let's do our cinema corners real quick yep. uh melissa i i you you have two things written down here that i'm both super interested to hear what your th- th- thoughts are i chose not to go see Argyle, but you went to go see Argyle. I did. What did you think? I uh spy bullshit is my kind of bullshit. I'll, t- yeah? I'll turn in for that every time. I saw the one trailer for this movie like 15 times. Which At I know least. is I, I you and I both go to a ton of movies. Mm-hmm. I there are other people in my life like I know one of my brothers just saw this thing for the first time like the other week so yeah, we're living in a different sphere than Absolutely. a lot of other people when I went to go see Godzilla sure? minus one minus color the people who were in the row in front of us when that trailer played was like oh that looked good <laughs> like right after it and it was just like I hate right? this trailer oh my god I <laughs> The first time I saw the trailer and it's like from the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughn, I'm like, I, I, I will a Henry Cavill spy movie. Sign me up. I will watch it. Every time I saw the trailer, I'm like, I am on board with this, but I'm kind of embarrassed to be on board with this. The trailer doesn't bug me specifically, but I know it must be bugging other people. So it was a pleasant surprise to hear from most folks. So they're like, yeah, I thought that movie looked cool. Like, oh, good. Okay. I feel less embarrassed now. Interesting. Um, I was fascinated by the trailer that kept promoting this twist and like all like the giant the real standy. Argyle? Right. Don't let the cat out of the bag. Like this is such a throwback. Uh, this is something like Alfred Hitchcock or like William Castle would do decades ago. Mm. Yeah, a the discussion around a new movie might circle around its twist, like from critics, from from fans, from bloggers or whatever. But I thought that's unusual for the marketing to really highlight what this twist is going to be, to tell you that there will be one. That's not a traditional game of the initial trailer for a movie. 
So I'm like, I have to see this as soon as I can. Thursday night, let me buy my tickets. It's, I, I think it is a fine movie. It is, uh, I'd compare it to Bullet Train, which you and oh, I okay. saw. It's at about that level. Yeah. The, I think the, the twists are not shocking enough for, I don't think, I think the trailer kind of oversells it. But then again, you and I watched that trailer over and over and over again. And I'm sure for the average audience member who saw it like once or twice and like wasn't super paying attention, they probably had a fine time. <laughs> Interesting. <clears throat> the response that I have seen online is that this movie is a mess. It is not good. Um, but then I've also like more recently started seeing a couple people being like, you probably think it's a mess because you're not familiar with Matthew Vaughn uh, and his twisted mind, right? Like, have you seen how ridiculous the Kingsman is? Like, like, like this is his bullshit. Like he's he's on his b -b bullshit. So, I, yeah, I I I would say take the it's a mess with a grain of salt and expect right. like this guy is just on his own bullshit. And I think you might mm -hmm. have a good time. Who knows? I it's colorful. I really like the cast. I love the two leads. I think Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell are yeah. well cast and turning out good performances. This reminded me of when recently we watched the whole Ghostbusters saga and we watched the 2016 one and thought, weird, that's oddly tame. Like there's not really any raunchy jokes in it. Nobody really swears. There's no violence. This is almost a movie you could show to a kid. That's what I felt about Argyle. It does not go huh. as hard as I was expecting after seeing like uh, kick ass. And I saw the first Kingsman movie. Yeah, it is like there's some blood for a couple like pivotal plot relevant injuries. And at one point, Sam Rockwell's character tells Bryce Dallas, Dallas Howard, I'm going to shoot all these guys. It, as we go down this hallway to escape after I shoot him, would you like smash their heads? To, like really make sure they're dead. This is how you would do it. And he sort of like mimics it, mimes it for her, but then she can't bring herself to do it. So you don't see it. Sure. So talk yeah, about yeah. a head squishing, but no head squishing is witnessed. Like it's really no not. No heads were harmed to the making of this film. <laughs> <laughs> no heads were squished. The, the violence is the sort of, bombastic colorful larger than life like really ridiculous sort of violence yeah um there's like not any raunchy th there's a dance move you in the trailer which we know so well when henry cavill's dancing with dua lipa there's Let's a move dance. in the movie where he like where he like lifts her up and so like her crotch is very close to his face mm -hmm. it's like we know what that represents but nobody says anything about it there's no winking or nudging or nodding about that. Interesting. So like, adults know how to read it, but I imagine a kid's just like, wow, incredible. You lifted her up so high. Fancy dancing. Yeah. I, I watched this and I thought this would be a great movie for like a preteen as like an introduction to adult like action thrillers. Yeah. This may be kind of underwhelming as an, for an adult viewing, but I think this is great. For somebody who has seen fewer films, who like is doesn't know how to predict twists or anything yet, it reminded me of being thirteen or fourteen and going to see Bryce Dallas Howard's first movie, The Village, and I had a great time mm. at The Village. But I remember critics were like, "Oh, that twist," and I'm like, "But I liked it. It worked on me." And I think <laughs> what The Village was to me, Argyle could be for a younger person now, and I yeah. think that is valuable we need that okay. we need like yeah, trade. that's fair not to that's like i uh, put the movie down but i i think it has a great like second purpose in being like a entry point movie for a, a younger film viewer sure yeah tell me about mr and mrs smith because i on the uh, other hand have heard nothing but great things about this. It, yes. it, so is this the sh show or did you go back and watch yes the movie no. show okay <laughs> no this is the new show i was kind of underwhelmed by argyle there was stuff in it i liked but it wasn't exactly what i was hoping it might turn out to be so then thank goodness 
uh, on Friday when I turn on my TV and I've got those splash page ads for Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And there's Donald Glover and Maya Erskine in mm-hmm. like just slick suits and they look so hot. I'm like, this is perfect. This is the this will bring my mood up. This is the antidote. And then I watched the whole thing. I watched all eight episodes. Hell yeah. Which you know I don't you, typically do. I, yeah. I am not a, a binger by nature. I pace things out very slowly, but I had time to and wanted to watch the whole thing before I sat down here with you tonight. Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard good things. That's on our list of like we should we should watch that soon here. So it's no, it's very fun. Really impressive action. The it's produced by Donald Glover and he directed mm-hmm. the final episode, which has some great action scenes in it. And it, we've also have you seen the trailer for Monkey Man? Uh, no, I have not. But I, I did see like the, there was a, the like recommended YouTube video on. This is a Dev very Patel, cool. Right? Yes, it's a very cool looking new action movie starring and directed by Dev Patel. Cool. I don't know if he's directed a feature film before, but like this looks impressive and like so action packed. I, I, I don't know Donald Glover's directing history. Perhaps he's directed many episodes of Atlanta. I've not yet seen but i i think it is very impressive when somebody who is perhaps new to directing or primarily known for something else direct something with that much technical precision needed to do these kinds of action set pieces sure it's really yeah. admirable um That's cool yeah mr and mrs smith looks great wonderful new york setting lots good. of fun guest stars popping in for an episode or two good fun good stuff good stuff um i finally got to watch society of the snow um which was uh, it's on netflix you guys can go check it out uh this is the movie that is about the 1970s Urugu- uruguayan rugby team that crashed in the andes i believe uh and uh ended up uh having to resort to cannibalism to keep themselves alive Mm. um and yeah this movie is really good (laughs) it is phenomenal um it is one that you will be like man there's so much that happened in this movie and then you'll pause it and realize you've only gone 10 minutes in movie so like it it is what you were describing you were hoping for for a uh the wages of fear remake Mm. where the plane crash happens quickly in the movie like that is the first thing and then the rest of it is them just trying to survive out in the cold um and i i guess that's something that i did not know they were out there for 72 days uh yep. which is just fucking wild <laughs> um, they did get home in time for christmas they sure <laughs> did small miracle they sure did um but yeah, just the the kind of just crazy things that happen to them while they're out there. It is heavy. It, it it is. It's still horrifying, but it does a good job of not like it, mm. I, I feel like you could easily go down like this is a horror movie and look at the horrific things they're doing. But they do a good job of not going down that route since it is based on real events and these people some of them survived and they had to do these horrific things to be able to survive and just kind of the drama that comes with that and the thoughts of like like is is this the right thing to to do is this Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. uh there's just a lot um but it was very good very good cannot recommend it enough so i i enjoyed it it's uh, we both like yellow jackets. We both like lost. Mm-hmm. It feels reminiscent of those things in different ways. Uh, Oscar nominations have happened since we last recorded. Society of the Snow was nominated for best international feature representing yeah. Spain. Mm-hmm. It was also nominated for best makeup. Interesting. Yeah. Well deserved. Uh, yeah. Very cool, scary injury makeup of different kinds. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, last though- time we recorded. I asked you to, we were talking about the Oscar nominations. 
predict. I asked you if you had any predictions, if you could name who you thought best actor might be. And your list of potential names was yes, chef, <laughs> Zac Efron Godzilla. and Godzilla, <laughs> which to be fair, only Zac Efron would qualify as best lead actor. Godzilla is yeah. clearly best supporting actor. <laughs> I don't know, man. Just, His name's on the movie. Just, <laughs> it's the title. You <laughs> just get to be lead in that. Uh, Godzilla was nominated for best special visual effects. Good, good for Which them is, for getting I, that. I, yeah, right. Yeah, I, it, it's not so common that an international film will get into that category. But so also, that's such exciting. a small crew to to make that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mission Impossible: Bravo. Dead Reckoning Part One was nominated for Best Visual Effects as well and Best Sound, which is the first time any Mission Impossible movie has been nominated for anything. Hmm. There you go. Which is boggling considering the high technical capabilities of all the previous, all six previous movies that it doesn't get anything until now. Yeah. But well-deserved. Also, I know you enjoyed The Creator. That also Mm -hmm. received nominations for Sound and Visual Effects. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. Yeah, um, I, 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 I still don't know anything about what's happening with the Oscars or anything like that, but I'm looking I, forward could you, uh, down, down you the Could you learn road. and explain it to me? <laughs> I explained football. Can you explain how Oscars work, works? I mean, I could kind of explain how the Oscars work already. I just don't follow it. Um, <laughs> it and like it's it's an award show and the, these are the they do these different categories and here's best makeup. How do they vote? A, they they, they pr- pr- probably have a, a selection of uh, judges and juries or something like they that. Do not. I don't know. I don't know that then. <laughs> you could learn. <laughs> I, I just read a 600 page book on Oscar history. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yes. There you go. Uh, it's called Oscar Wars. It's I think the author's name is Michael Schulman. A long time uh, it ago. Was 500, it was 500. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> the it Oscar was 581 Wars. pages when I downloaded the ebook from my local library onto my Kindle. Uh, and it was taking me so long to get through that I did switch to the audio book for the last couple chapters. So it was also able to get free from my local public library. Yeah. Hey, cool. Good stuff. Good Great stuff. Great resource. Indeed. Learned yeah. a lot. Absolutely. Uh, cool. Well, I think that is kind of about it. All the stuff that we got for this here podcast. Um, so, Melissa, where can the people find you on the interwebs? I have a letterbox. I don't use it much, but it is there. I am at WilkyWit, W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. I come here and I yammer about movies. I don't type it out. So you, you, you should use that stuff to help narrow d- 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 down what your review is of a movie this is your sounding board here right? <laughs> yeah. i don't know anyways uh let's see that's not the right button that i need to hit this is the right button that i need to hit uh if you guys would like to follow me i am at yo kyle springer uh and if you guys want to stay up to date on all the stuff we do here at the whatnots we are on threads at the whatnots official uh, so please go like, share, and subscribe. That would help us out a ton. Go check out some more of our videos right over there on that side of the screen if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, this has been number 265 of the Whatnots Captain's Log. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.